Hi and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to explain how to set up the Personas Atom, which is a pad style drum controller. It can be used in a variety of ways. I'm going to show you how to set this up in waveform. Now it has 16 pads and it has four knobs. It also has a variety of buttons. Now, if you're familiar with this device, you're probably aware that it is designed to work with Studio One and it is also designed to work with Ableton Live. But the thing is, it's just really a controller for the most part. We can assign some of these buttons to functions within Waveform, or really any DAW for that matter. I'm gonna show you that at the end of this video, but in the beginning, I'm just gonna show you the basic operation of how to get it going in Waveform, how to use it as a pad controller with the drum sampler, how to use it as a keyboard controller with a synth. All of these things are pretty easy. If you're using a different controller in waveform, a lot of these things will also still apply. So to get started, we go to the settings tab. First of all, we're gonna set this up as a MIDI device. Now, before you get to this step, install the latest version of the Personas Universal Control Driver, which will make sure everything is working properly and that the firmware is up to date. Once you've done that, when you start Waveform, you should see this. You should see that you've got an input and an output in the Settings tab under MIDI Devices. Just turn these two things on. Once you've done that, once you go back over into your Edit, you can now select it as an input. You can see I've got Atom right here. Now here's the micro drum sampler. The regular drum sampler and the multi-sampler all work the same in this regard. So I'll just select a kit, choose the 808 kit. Now you're gonna to wanna to map these. There are some initial mapping. It doesn't work right though. You could see I'm hitting pad one and it's triggering pad two. So we're gonna go through the MIDI learn. So you do that by clicking this icon down here, toggle MIDI learn. We'll click on the very first pad in the upper left corner, which is pad 13. We're gonna go left to right and touch each of these pads in order. And it will, it will learn the correct MIDI notes for this assignment. When I get to the last one, it flips to page B. You can see we've got four pages here from A to D of setups in the micro drum sampler and all the other ones work the same way. So once you've completed that, click MIDI learn to turn off MIDI learning and go back to pad A. Now here's all our drum sounds. So those are the basics to get that working. Now I wanna go over some of the operation of the unit itself. There is a settings button right here that's flush with the surface. And this is kind of the key to programming this thing to work exactly the way you want. Now, the very first thing I want to point out is that this thing generates a lot of channel after pressure data. So once you hit the pad and you hold it down, it just continues to send that. You have the option to put it in after pressure mode or channel pressure mode. There's also another custom mode that you can do here. I'm suggesting the very first thing you do is turn those off. So we do that by holding on the sentence button. This controls what happens with channel pressure and after touch and things like that. And by default, it's on this one here, which is channel pressure. I suggest turning that off. So that's the very first thing that you'll wanna do. Now, the next thing to be aware of is that you've got different modes of operation for this thing as a pad controller, as a keyboard style controller and as a light show. So that is set on pads one, two, and three. So our normal 16 pad controller view is with this, you hold on settings and hit this. Now, if you wanna use it as a keyboard, you press, you hold on settings and press pad two. Then it lights up like this. So these kind of yellow keys wind up being the white keys, and then the blue ones are essentially black notes with this as a C. So to demonstrate that, I'm gonna drag the input with the atom on it to track two where I've got a keyboard set up. And now I can play in the key of C if I hit all these white notes. 
And you could change the register or the octave with these two up here. So if I hit this one, I'll go down an octave. You can see that this is a little bit brighter, meaning that we're not at the default. When they're both on, that means we're kind of back at the home. We can also go up. Now this thing is very velocity sensitive. If you want to lock that, if you're programming drums or something and you want to lock that so that it's not, then there's a button over here that you could hit that says full level. Then it just sends out all the MIDI notes with the velocity set to 127, so you're locked in at the full velocity. So that's that mode. The other mode, if you press this down and hit three, basically you just get a light show. Normally you're gonna want it on this mode or this mode here. These set the velocity level. So up here you can see that I've got velocity on medium. This is sort of the velocity sensitivity. So this is the soft, hard, and medium. This is a tap tempo for note repeat. So if I hit that slowly, you'll see that it slows down. Also this knob here controls it, so that slows it down or speeds it up. Now none of these things work unless you've got this button depressed. This is related to the velocity pressure range, which you want to leave here. This is pressure threshold, which you probably don't need to wor worry about. And this one here can be useful. This is all notes off. So if you get notes stuck on, you can push this down, hit that one, and it just sends all notes off. Now in a previous video, I showed using the chord companion. That will also map into this. I showed how to do that in that video as well. All right, so there's a built-in note repeat function. It's kind of fun to play with, particularly if you're working with hi-hats, which we often are. I'm gonna drag the atom input back to track one where we've got our micro drum sampler set up. Here's our closed hat sound. So here's how this works. You turn on note repeat. It's asking which sound you wanna play. I'm gonna press this one. This is my hi-hat pad. And now I can just use any of these to get any of these divisions. So if I want eighth note hi-hats, I just hold this down. 16th. To repeat how this works, say we wanted to do maybe the kick. I'll hit note repeat, I select the note, and now I can start playing. If you want to choose a different note, then you hit select here and choose a new one and start playing. And then when you're done, you hit note repeat again. And keep in mind that the tempo of that is based on this tap tempo here. So you can tap tempo that in. In my test so far, the note repeat is kind of fun, but it doesn't sync to the clock. Maybe there's a way to do it. I haven't figured that out yet. So I'm gonna turn that off and let's move on to showing how to set this thing up and map some of the things in as a controller. Now. A lot of these buttons here have special functions if you're in Ableton Live or in Studio One. However, they just send CC or continuous controller data out and therefore you can turn on and off things by just mapping them to some of the buttons like maybe the transport buttons in Waveform. Some of them latch, like if you look at the play button, you turn that on and off, it, it's latching as you see that light up like that. Those don't work very well because you have to hit them twice to make them go on and off. But something like this stop button, which is momentary, the zoom button, you don't want to mess with the select button. And then all of these are all kind of fair game for using to map to some other functions. So I'm just going to show you how that's done. 
Now, first of all, we need to set it up as a control surface, which is quite simple. You go back to settings, go to control surfaces, and then just click this button, create a new control surface. We'll just name it Atom. And then for that control surface, down at the bottom, you'll see you need to make sure that the input and the output are set to match the device name. You could give it a color, which is kind of helpful on the next page when we do MIDI Learn, you'll see this color. And then you can also set the number of channels and parameters. We'll leave those at the defaults for now. Later, we'll come back and look at the control mappings. Once you've kind of automatically map some of these things, you can come back to this list and take them out or edit them later. Back here, let's just set up the play button to the stop button. It'll be toggle, play, and pause. So in waveform at the bottom, you'll see this thing that looks like a DIN connector for an old MIDI cable. When you click that, we'll enter the MIDI learn mode. Now from there, you'll see up here it says listening. We want to click something on the user interface that we want to control with this button. So we'll come down to the transport, which is kind of glowing pink or magenta. Click that, and you'll see now it says control waiting to be assigned play. All I need to do is just hit this button here. It maps it. Go back down here and exit the MIDI Learn. Now when I hit this, I have playback. There's nothing playing right now, but you can see that the cursor is moving. We could set some of these other things too, like maybe we would set left and right to move the cursor through the project. So let's just uh, do that. Go back to the MIDI Learn by clicking the MIDI Learn button. And then these are the play and rewind. So we'll do, we'll do the right button. We'll do uh, as fast forward. So I just click here. Now I'll click, you can see the assignments waiting for fast forward. I'll press right. And then I'll press the other one and press left. And while I'm at it, I think I'll do zoom in, which I'll click here. There's some of the built-in functions sh are shown up in this graphic. We can just click them here. I'll do zoom in, I'll map that to down, and then I'll do zoom out and map that to up. Exit MIDI Learn. So here's my play. Here's my cursor transport function. I can move up and down. Here is zooming in and zooming out. One thing I'm missing is maybe a rewind. I have one more, no, that won't work. I have hide show left over, so I'm gonna assign that. This is not well thought out. I'm just showing you how this works. Let's go back and we'll assign hide show to the rewind or to the return to zero function. So I'll click here, hit that, exit there, and now I've got a rewind. So you could set these any way you want or not use them, but it is just kind of a fun thing. Now we also have these knobs. These are just generic endless encoders that we could assign to anything where you might need a knob. I am going to assign it to my master fader here. So we'll go back into MIDI Learn, click on the master fader. It's asking me if I want master volume or pan. So I'll choose master volume. It's waiting to be assigned. Now all I need to do is wiggle this knob a little bit. It picks up the assignment click to exit MIDI learn. And now if you look down there, I have, I can twist this to operate the master volume right here. Now one of the things that I often forget how to do is how to undo these assignments. If you don't like the assignment, go back into MIDI learn and there is a trick. And this trick is actually explained up here in the rollover help. If you look at that, it says, click, then move a MIDI control to make assignments. Shift click on an assignment label to remove it. So say I wanted to remove this zoom out. I, you could see this little yellow thing. That means it's assigned to the atom, which we assigned to the color yellow. I hold down shift, that locks this in. Now I can click on this little square here 
that takes that assignment out. So over here now I hold down shift and I can take that out. There is another way to do that is to go back to the settings page, the control surfaces, click on the actual atom, pull up the whole list of mappings. So you can see the controller numbers and you can see all the things they're assigned to. Here you can actually change what they're assigned to. So here where it's assigned to play, you can choose from kind of all of the things that you might be able to do with this. Change it from play to stop or maybe to record home. All of these things are available. But if you want to take these out, then you could just, you just highlight them and delete them. So I just undid all of those assignments. Now a lot of what I'm showing you here, let's exit MIDI Learn, is generic for any kind of control surface. But since we're focused on the atom, I just thought I'd kind of walk through how all of that works related to this particular device. I hope you find this helpful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video very soon.